happy to be here today, you will not believe it. So I said, I see F and B. She said, good. And the next robot turned the right. Continue all the way as if you're going out of town. Just when you feel you're about to leave town, <laughs> you'll see a sign that says two schools, one of which is our school is the second school. I've never had so much calm, clear directions. Which means either your principal is very smart or the town is very small. <laughs> Anyway, it is lovely to be here today, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the heart of a teacher. I want to talk to you a little bit about what makes a really, really good teacher. I want to talk to you, because I'm a teacher, I used to teach biology. Now you've changed it and you call it life sciences. I have no idea what life sciences is. I was a really good teacher. Yes like so many here today. But what is the heart? What goes on in the heart of a teacher? Which you don't really see. Because all you see is this dragon with another test and more homework and another test. Uh, do I hear an amen? Hey, that's dragons. But actually, you know, none of us became teachers to get rich. We became, we became teachers because we want to make a difference. And I think that's the story of Jade, who was also a lady, I, I'm told. We do it because we care about you and we don't want you to become like the country. Now, young people from this amazing school, I have bad news for you. This country treats you as if you are idiots. Show me another country in the world where 87% of the kids are writing exams this year will write mathematical literacy rather than mathematics. Does that mean 87% are dumb? No. It means the country doesn't expect you to do math. Show me another country in which you can pass with 30% in some subjects and 40% in some. Would you run home and say, Mom, guess what? I got 31% in math. Are you nuts? Show me another country that has just introduced a new policy. I don't even know about this. There's a new policy requiring automatic promotion in the senior phase. What does that mean? You cannot fail in the senior phase more than once. So if you failed in grade 10, and you fail again in grade 11. The school must put you through even though you fail. You didn't know that? Did you know? In parts of the country where I live at the moment, in a place called Bochabella, in the Free State, this year there will be more children in grade 12 writing the finals, the National Senior Certificate, who actually never passed once than children who actually pass. Is that the kind of country you want to be in? Your country teaches you like, treats you like idiots. Do you know what subject in schools in South Africa has the highest pass mark? Life orientation, and still the girls get pregnant. Explain that to me. Marks in life orientation was a school in Limpopo. It so happened to also be the school with the highest number of teenage pregnant girls. Explain the relationship between high marks in life orientation and big stomachs in Madrid. Explain that to me. You live in a country that doesn't expect much of you. Did you know that this year the Minister of Basic Education decided there's going to be an exit certificate. Listen carefully. An exit certificate in grade 9. What job are you going to get with an exit certificate in grade 9? You lost chickens at the KFC in Brownford team. That's where you headed. You 
are lucky to be at a good school. You are lucky to be at a school where they take you seriously. This is what I want to tell you. You cannot measure yourself by the standards of your government. Let me be very clear about that. Your life will be over. Measure yourself by the standards of your school, of a good school. Measure yourself by the standards you set for yourself. What does this mean? What does this mean? Of those 30,000 students at our university, we raised the marks to get into the university to an AP score of 30. Of course, it's 36 for medicine, and of course, it's 38 for architecture, but at least no student comes in there anymore. Since we've raised it to 30, and the rest we sent to Rhodes, but I expect my students. Oh, you see, okay, Jim, make your choice. But I know that you are smarter than you actually think. Secondly, you are smarter than many of your teachers even think. Thirdly, you are definitely smarter than your family thinks you are. Did you know, people, my students always say to me, yes, but Prof, you know you, you come here and you expect so much of us, but you know you are smart. I am not smart. Keep this between us, please don't tell anybody. The Jacksons are not smart people. We bloody dumb, but we work harder than anybody else. We work harder than anybody else. Did you know when I was in primary school? This is a fact. My mathematics marks were negative integers. Because those days, you didn't just get a mark. The teachers will remember. You didn't just get a mark if you got something right. They took away a mark if you got it wrong. To prevent guessing, they said. So my math marks in primary school was always minus 19, minus 38. My goal in primary school was to get zero, just to go up on the number line. And so I knew as a young kid, a young black boy at Sullivan Primary School in Skinberg in Cape Town, I knew that I needed to do something to boost my confidence. But it wasn't going to be mathematics. You know something, young woman. I met a teacher like Jade, a passionate teacher. His name was Mr. Holland. He taught me Latin. I did Latin at school. And one day, he came to me and he said, you know, young man, you pretend you know nothing, but actually, you're very smart. Now, nobody had ever told this kid who couldn't even afford shoes for some years in school. Nobody had ever told me as a poor kid that I had potential. It's just because he said that. I didn't even know what the word means. This was before you could Google the word. <laughs> before dictionary.com. And I went home and I said to my mother, Mommy, what does this word potential mean? She was a nurse. She said, it's very simple, son. It means you don't have to play soccer for the rest of your life because that's all I did. And since that day, whether in South Africa, at school, or at university, or whether in the United States at university, I never, ever again came second in class. Ever. Simply because somebody told me, you're smarter than you think. Of those 30,000 students that I'm privileged to serve, some of them are your children, yes, teach me. Let me tell you something. Where do you want me to start? Should I start with Nozimanga Bondia, who was raped by a cousin at the age of nine in a place called Dealsville on the road to Kimberley? And a mother didn't want to take this moron to the police station because his father put bread on the table. So Nozi had to carry this pain for so many years. <clears throat> then she moved back to the shack in Bloemfontein and she hears a noise one morning. She gets up with her little brother. She's now 11 years old. And then she sees her father beating her mother to death. And the father says, get some water and clean up the blood. Oh. 
and I'm other guys. And the principal of Gray High School, Mr. Falstein, sees this beautiful kid in one of his winter schools and he puts her in grade 10 in UNICE, girls' school. And she becomes one of the top kids at UNICE with 80s and 90 percent. And at the next graduation, Nozi Manga Bonya is going to walk across the stage of the University of the Free State with a degree, a BSc degree, in molecular biology. That means that I don't care how poor you are, I don't care what you went through, I don't care how smart you think you are or how dumb you think you are, if Nozi can make it, you can make it. You know about this young kid in Matata who blew up his mother's kitchen? She came home from work and half the kitchen was gone. Because he wanted to design a rocket fuel that could get him to Jupiter. He's now, this young man, Siabulela, now has a minor, thanks to NASA, he's got a minor planet named after him, right next to Jupiter. But when you saw him in Matata, you didn't think this kid was going anywhere. I want to tell you, beautiful young woman of Rebecca College, you are smarter than you think. So the next time your teacher says, Ooh, we don't think you're going very far. Let's put you in mathematical literacy. You say, no, miss, I'm in mathematics, but guess what? I'm going to study twice as hard to make sure I succeed, because no university is going to take me with mathematical literacy. Let's be honest about that. I can give you many stories, but at our university, it's not just important, not just important that you do well in your academics, it's also that you do well as a human being. In other words, that you learn to be decent. At my university, I would never tolerate a student leader getting up as a vet and saying, I love Hitler. That will be his last day on campus. <laughs> what kind of moron loves somebody who sent six million people to their death in gas chambers? I wouldn't tolerate a student on my campus like this idiot at UCT who got up and says, all whites must be killed. That will be his last day on my campus. Because we teach our students to be compassionate human beings to be loving, to care for others more than for yourself. You see, you can get a degree and still be a barbarian. You can be formally educated and still be uneducated as a human being. The degree is not enough. It is also what kind of human being are you? Now, if the future depended on us here, you don't have to wait for ESCOM to put on the light, off the lights, it's over. Because our children are better than us. You have the potential to be better than us. My son, who's also a teacher, is much better than me. The reason I love my kids, the two biological kids, and the reason I love each and every one of my 30,000 students is because you, are better than us. Get a degree, but also get decency. Get an education, but also get, in the beautiful Afrikaans word, a opfuden, which is more than education. It's really becoming human. And as you carry with you the memory of this beautiful art, your teacher, Jay. I want you to grieve as you have and should. But I also want you to look over the rainbow and see the future.
Every man has to be his own savior. I know I can make it on my own if I try. When I'm searching for a great heart to stand me by underneath the African sky. 